Okay, so welcome back. In the last video, we started adding property controls to our gradient mask component. And in this video, we're gonna add a bunch more. If we look at the finished component, still a bunch of missing component properties we wanna add. First one we're gonna add is this image control. And that allows us to go in here and specify any image we want. So I can just click on that and it's added to our gradient mask. So let's hop into our component. And just to refresh our memories, we have an image tag over here and we're passing it a hard-coded unsplash URL. So instead of this, we want users to be able to pass in their own images here. So luckily for that, we have a control type called responsive image. So let's add a new property control. We we'll call it image, and we're going to give it a type of control type dot responsive image. Now, unlike a lot of other control types, image doesn't really accept a default value. It just falls back to nothing, and that's a little bit of a problem for the way we've got stuff set up. So back in our component, we just need to pull in image over here, and then if we console dot log the image. You can see right now it's pulling in undefined, but if we go back to our canvas and we open up our image, choose a random photo, and let's preview that, and then go back into our component, preview that. Now when we log the image, we can see that it has this format of source and source set and alt. So what we need to do is go down to our source on the image. I'm going to wrap this in some brackets. I'm going to say image.source or this URL, which will serve as our default URL. But if we save that, you can see that it can't read source. And that's because we need to add a little question mark here to make sure that image is actually valid first. So now when we do that, it realizes there is no image source and falls back to this. And if we preview the desktop version, you can see that the image we chose from earlier is being passed down. We might also want to pass down down the source set so that these images work responsively. So we do the same sort of thing, image.source set, and we'll just do that and pass in the alt too. Okay, brilliant. So now our image is working, but what if we don't want to just mask an image? What if we want to mask something else on the canvas? You can see in our finished component, we have the ability to mask other items on the canvas. So in this case, we're masking this mock element. Now to do that, we need a special control type. So let's go ahead and create a property control for that. And this one we're going to call children because when we pass these in, they will be passed in as children elements. And then we're going to say type control type dot component instance. And again, there is no default value for a component instance. Now, before we carry on, we need to change up our component a little bit to make room for these component instances. If the user is dragged in a component instance, we don't want to mask this image. We want to mask that component. So we actually need a separate component property, which will toggle between masking an image or masking a component. So we're going to add another component property down here and we're going to call it type. And this one's going to have a type of control type dot enum. And enum allows us to specify between a bunch of preset options. You can basically think of an enum control as like a drop down or a toggle. And then the first thing we're going to give it is options. And this will be the options we want to choose between. So it's an array of strings. We want the first option to be image and the second option to be component. And now we're going to specify the labels for each of those option titles. It's the same sort of thing. We're just going to capitalize them. And then we can provide a default value. That default value is going to be image. And we can also customize the control that it shows. So I can say display segmented control. And we'll say true. And then we'll say segmented control direction. And we want that to be vertical. Okay, cool. So let's go check out what this looks like. Now we have a bunch of new controls. We have this type control. Where we can switch between image and component. And then we have the children field as well as the image field. If I click on this drop down, you can see it allows me to select something else on the canvas, in which case it's this color cycle component from Benjamin. So if I select that, it draws a line between the two, but obviously we haven't hooked any of this up. So nothing's working. Now, before we carry on, I actually wanna make sure that when this is in component mode, only the component picker is visible. And when it's in image mode, only the image picker is visible. And luckily we can dynamically show some component properties based on the values of other component properties. So again, we want to hide this children property if the type is set to image. And we can configure that by adding a hidden property, but hidden works a little bit differently from 
other properties, instead of hidden being something like true or false, hidden actually takes a function. And the way we write that function is like this. So we pass in some parameters and then return some results. So in this case, we're going to say return props dot type equals image. So what's happening here is props are all the other component properties. And in this case, we're drilling down into props.type. So this property over here, and we're saying if it equals image, return true. And that will switch the value of the hidden property to true when props.type equals image. So back on the canvas, you can see that image is selected and that children picker is invisible. And then when I go to component, it's visible again. Now we want to do the exact same thing for the image control, except we want it to be evaluated against component. Now when we hop back into our canvas, now we can only select the correct one. Now we need to go back into our component and actually hook up the children property so that this color cycle gets put into our component. Okay, so let's pull out that children property. And we're also going to pull out the type that we added. And then we'll scroll down to this image. And now we only want to show this image if type equals image. So we'll do just that. Add some brackets, type equals image, and and, and then wrap that in a bracket. So that hasn't changed anything in our preview because the default is image. And we're going to do the same thing for children. So we're going to say type equals component and and children. Now if we preview the desktop, we can see that that color cycle component is being rendered inside of our mask. If we hop back into the canvas, you can see that it's kind of rendering a little bit weirdly, but that's because it's set to fixed and we need to set it to fit content. And then the size of this will be determined by the size of this. Now that's where things get a little bit weird and difficult to explain. But essentially, if we put this back into fixed, and we resize our component, you can see that the color cycle component doesn't fill our component. And you might remember from the first video that the way we usually handle this is by passing down style properties onto that element. But if we go into our component, you can see we don't really have access to the child as a react element. Prima does some magic to get the children to appear here, and it usually wraps them in a container div, and we can't control the size of that container div. So we really don't have much control over the sizing of this child element. And it's just one of the constraints of code components. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. In the next one, we're going to add the ability to animate our mask with frame of motion and control its transitions. Catch you in the next one.